I'm John Norris, and welcome to One by One with New Kids on the Block. You know, it was the summer of 1989 that I first met these five guys from Dorchester, Massachusetts. They'd already had their first number one hit, and New Kids Mania was really beginning to take hold. They finished that year the top-selling group in America, bringing to 15 million their worldwide total of record and video sales. Right now, let's have a look at the New Kids phenomenon. All right, well, despite all of that, earlier in 1990, some people were saying that new kids had peaked, that their 15 minutes of fame was over. But then along they came with their fastest breaking album yet and their biggest tour to date. We recently spent some time with the guys out on the road on their magic summer tour and managed to speak with four-fifths of the band, the only one we didn't chat with being Jonathan Knight. So we're gonna get started with the guy who, for my money, represents the spirit and the energy of this group, Donnie Wahlberg. He's also the new kid who's been the subject of some rumors in recent months. I'm not one to, uh, to, to put much stock in what the tabloids have to say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I mean, I've seen this in like what three or four different places over the last two months. You know, Donnie is leaving New Kids. Donnie's thinking about leaving New Kids. Is this total, uh, totally not right? No, I think. Well, first of all, there's there's so much stuff in all the tabloids and in everywhere that, I mean, you know, a lot of people are gonna believe a lot of stuff that they hear, but no, it's not true. I don't have any plans on going anywhere, no. And uh, I think them things is cause like, see, like our image is so, is so like different from what we really are, you know what I'm saying? We're, we're different, we're good, not kids be role model like other people. And, you know, when people see like me on the street, a lot of people are surprised by what they see. You know, I'm not out there doing drugs or drinking and stuff like that. But I, I just, I mean, I grew up in the streets of Boston. And when you grow up in the streets of Boston, you learn to not take no crap. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. And when people see me on the street, they expect me to be running around, you know, you know, hiding behind my bodyguards and this and that. And, you know, a lot of dudes want to try and take shots at us. Mm -hmm. And I don't go for it, you know. So and I think people grab at that, grab at maybe my outspokenness and my difference than say the rest of the guys in the group and it's just it's just an easy thing to get but i mean the guys in the group and myself we all we all just act like ourselves and you know i think just me being a little bit different than the rest of the guys is just easy to easy to pick at um as you said before you guys it's important to you that you're just positive people and if you project a positive image great you know um how adamant are you that the people around you in your organization are as positive and as and and live the way you live in terms of drug free basically in a positive kind of way i mean there's times you know if if the show is over and stuff you see a lot of the roadies in the bar and stuff like mm -hmm. that that's fine you know what i'm saying that's their right to do that you know it's just that just the way i live doesn't make the way somebody else lives wrong you know what i'm saying and i've never tried to say that somebody else is wrong for living the way they want to live you know, a lot of people in my family, brothers and sisters, had drug problems. You know what I'm saying? And that taught me lessons, you know? And that's kind of why it is that new kids uh, speak against drugs and this and that, but they don't know what they're talking about. Man, I grew up with drugs all around me, not only in the streets, but in my own family, you know? So I definitely know what I'm talking Wasn't about. Wasn't the temptation there drugs. for you? Yeah, the temptation was definitely there for me. You know, and when I was young, I experimented with things, but I think seeing my family go down taught me a lesson. You know, and that's why I just try and, and just let people know that that's how I feel about it now. I know that one of the big, uh, big issue of concern to a number of artists this year, and I'm, I'm not sure how involved in it New Kids have been, is um, the environment. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to get your thoughts on that, the importance of, you know, saving the planet in relation to the fact that, and I know like before you said you don't have to justify sponsorship and that mm -hmm. sort of thing, but if there's one company that has, been, that has been the target of environmentalists, it's uh -huh. this one right here. And I just, I, do you have any thoughts on the fact that... Yeah, well, know? actually, I'll say this. John Knight, for starters, was very, very strongly 
you know, talking to McDonald's mm -hmm. about the environment, you know, mm -hmm. about the styrofoam right. boxes and this and that, and we all talk to them about it. They are trying to replace this, this yeah, stuff, huh? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're trying to do that right now, and they're trying to, you know, they're recycling, they're starting to put all these recycling bins in the store and everything, so, you know, I mean, nobody's perfect. Yeah. I mean, look at so much good stuff they do, the Ronald McDonald houses and mm -hmm. stuff like that, and they're always doing stuff like um, basketball leagues and this and that. I right. mean, McDonald's does so much positive stuff, you know, for, for kids and for everyone in general. I mean, you know, and for them to just show that they are concerned about the environment themselves was good enough for me. Yeah. It seemed to me that in terms of, I don't know how much you guys really care at this point about critical acceptance, you know, or more mm -hmm. serious music acceptance. I mean, how important is that kind of acceptance to you? The fact that, I mean, the fact that Chuck D comes out in several interviews and says he is a fan of you guys and respects you and that sort of mm -hmm. thing, that must make you feel good. It, it yeah. definitely makes me feel good. Um, see, a lot, see, the, this is where it gets tough for me because, you know, when I walk through, like, the streets of a town or something, not just talking about critics, I mean, critics are everywhere. Regular people on the street are critics themselves. When I walk through the streets of a town and, and there's a couple of kids on the corner who are, like, trying to put down the new kids, you know, and I walk over to them, and I, I mean, I'll get in a fist fight mm -hmm. with them right there on the street. Mm -hmm. And people will say, Donnie, you know, don't go to their level. You know, you're a millionaire, this and that. Don't worry about what people say about you. You shouldn't care. But the thing is, I do care. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I think everyone in the world cares about how people feel about them in one way or another. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and I care. That's how I am. I'm not going to try and say, hey, I got a million dollars. You can talk about me all you want, because that's not how I am. If you're trying to, you know, to insult me and stuff, I'm gonna stand up for myself no matter what. And as far as critics go, you know, writers and stuff like that, I mean, they have a job to do, and I don't necessarily agree with it, but as long as they write out of knowledge and not out of ignorance, you know, if a critic comes to the show and sees it and says, hey, you know, the show wasn't that good, I'll respect that because they came and seen it. But most of the stuff I read, man, people have never even talked to us, met us, seen us, or nothing. And that I can't accept. That's just ignorance. It takes time.